Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at another one of these all-in-ones that you can import from GearBest.com. This one is the Honda C270. It sells for about $370 right now, a 23.8 inch full HD display and it's one of these little all-in-ones that isn't much bigger than a monitor might be and we're going to be taking a closer look at this one in a few minutes here. Uh, not something I'm going to recommend and I'll uh, tell you that up front here, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this did come in free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before it was uploaded. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. In case you didn't notice at the intro here, this is a curved display, but it is a very subtle curve on it. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm not all that crazy about the image quality out of this. I believe this is a TN display, so you do lose a little bit of the uh, image clarity when you go off center with it. And it is a very cold display in that everything looks very blue. Uh, there's no touch screen on here, even though we've got fingerprints on the screen. Uh, so it is just a basic display. And unfortunately, you cannot plug in something else into this and have it work as a monitor. So a couple of weeks ago, we looked at a Lenovo device that lets you do that. You could have it be a computer or have it be a monitor. Uh, this one is just the computer. You can uh, run external displays from it but not to it, so keep that in mind. Now there is a keyboard and a mouse included here. They're wireless, really low quality though, the keyboard especially. It's very squishy, uh, not very comfortable to type on. It runs on triple A batteries. Uh, the mouse runs on a single double A. I don't believe the computer has Bluetooth built into it, at least Windows didn't detect that. So inside of the mouse is a, a little dongle here that works with both the keyboard and the mouse to get up and running. My one caution on this though is that many of these no-name keyboards and mice uh, do not encrypt the communication from the keyboard, for example, back to the computer. So it's possible for somebody to intercept your keystrokes if they know how to listen for them and they have, to, of course, to be nearby. But uh, I would say it's not worth the risk. Uh, certainly the keyboard isn't worth carpal tunnel syndrome. So I would skip uh, both of these devices and bring your own. Uh, the other issue is that it didn't come with a Windows installation or any operating system for that matter. So we did have to install Windows from scratch. Unfortunately, the audio drivers do not work. We can't get any sound out of this thing uh, either through its internal speakers or uh, going through its audio outputs in the back so uh, that was out of the running too and we could not find any drivers on Anda's website this is a ongoing issue that you run into with a lot of these Chinese devices which is why I always recommend that you uh, buy these things at your own risk this is certainly one of those instances but the reason why we're even doing this review uh, is because there's a processor in here that we haven't encountered on an inexpensive PC lately uh, which is the Celeron that is is based on the current desktop architecture processors. So this one inside has a Celeron 3865U. Uh, this is a lot faster than the Apollo Lake chips that we typically see in uh, computers like this one that are coming in from GearBest. They're uh, generally low powered chips. Uh, this one, although it's called the Celeron, does run a lot faster. It is uh, about a notch below the i3. So the i3 will be faster, but it's a lot faster again than something that might have lower specifications. And I'm thinking about that tech last all-in-one we looked at a few months ago that had one of those lower powered chips. And I'll put links to all these computers uh, down in the video description. It has four gigabytes of RAM built in and a 120 gigabyte SSD. I believe that's an M SATA SSD. We took this apart on the extras channel. Uh, so you can swap out that solid state disk if you want and put in a larger one. There's also a full SATA uh, port in there with a wire so you could hook up a regular two and a half inch uh, SSD as well or even a spinning hard drive in there. Uh, you can also upgrade the RAM. It's single channel configuration but you could probably get this up to eight gigabytes of RAM without any issues. We're very pleased with how easy it was to get behind there. Uh, there's a full video up on the extras channel detailing that but all you have to do really is just uh, undo this back portion there and you can see what everything looks like on it. Uh, as for ports, you've got two USB uh, 2.0 ports right here and on the bottom of the display you have two USB 3.0 ports, another pair of USB 2.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, HDMI out, not in, and audio in and out. Those are analog connectors at the bottom but again we can't get audio working for some reason on Windows here. Uh, there is no power mechanism built into the device itself so you do have a power brick for providing power to the device. 
Uh, mine did not come with a US cable for the last uh, connection to the wall there, so I did have to find one of my uh, extra cables I have laying around here. And any uh, good geek like myself has got dozens of these kicking around when you need them. So that wasn't a problem, but there are, again, some issues getting audio working on this overall. I was pleased, though, with the stand. It does seem to keep the uh, display here relatively steady. I've got a cheap IKEA desk here, and you can see it doesn't bounce around all that much. So that was good to see as far as uh, how well it maintains its stability on the desk there. And you do have a little bit of range of motion here, not a lot, but you can uh, move it back and forth like this to get uh, into the right angle for the best usage there. So that's the overall hardware. Not bad, but again, some uh, problems that are uh, preventing me from recommending this one. But let's take a look and see how this processor performs because we haven't seen one of these yet uh, in this generation of processors, and I was eager to see how it compares. So let's kick things off with some web browsing. We've got my YouTube channel running here, 1080p at 60 frames per second, no drop frames. Everything seems to be working as expected. Uh, we were connecting over Wi-Fi to that YouTube video, and I should note this does not have wireless AC on board, unfortunately. You might be able to swap out the wireless card on here and get that later, but uh, that's another thing you got to do. Uh, but it does support 2.4 gigahertz A, B, G, and N uh, wireless, which was enough for uh, that YouTube video to play back smoothly. It also uh, did fine on the web. We went to nasa.gov, a very multimedia-rich website, and everything popped up very quickly and uh, as expected. You might get a little better performance if it had 8 gigabytes of RAM and that you could have multiple tabs up on screen at the same time and more quickly quickly uh, switch between them. But overall, with a single web page, not a problem. Everything worked great on this. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 73.23. And compare that to the i3 that we recently encountered on the Lenovo IdeaPad 320. Uh, that one came in at 102. So you can see kind of the differences here from going from the Celeron uh, up to the i3. And if we keep going on that scale, you can check out the i7 that was in the IdeaPad 520S that we looked at recently, uh, that one came in at 147. So there is quite a range in KB Lake for uh, the different processor classifications. This one, of course, is on the low end of that scale. It also does fine with Microsoft Word and other productivity applications, as you can see here. So I don't think there'll be any issues getting the basics done on this. But again, you're going to have some frustrations getting this thing set up in the first place. So let's move on to some gaming. We've got Rocket League running up on screen right now. This is at 1080p with all the settings turned down, about 25 to 30 frames frames per second in Rocket League, which isn't bad at 1080p. Uh, we found a big performance boost with these KB Lake generation of processors insofar as graphics is concerned, and it looks like they even uh, gave the Celeron version of the KB Lake a little boost in graphical performance too, so that was good to see. We also ran Minecraft as we always do here on the channel. Uh, there we got frame rates in the high 40s to 60 frames per second, give or take. So uh, for light gaming, this is not so bad, but you won't hear any sound, unfortunately, when uh, you are playing those games at least at the moment. I'm hoping again to be able to track down those audio drivers and maybe some of you on the channel here can help point me in the right direction for that. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 3,083. Not bad actually for a low end device, but again, it's got a KB Lake processor in there. If you want to see what an i3 will do, the Lenovo IdeaPad 320 I mentioned earlier uh, does a little better on the graphics performance, about 10 to 20 frames per second faster. And of course, the CPU is faster on it, but uh, this thing really does hold its own. So not a, a bad bit of performance out of here from a low-end device. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 98.4%, which is a passing grade. Anything less than 97% on this test is a failing one. And that surprised me, especially given how tiny the heat sink and fan is uh, on this computer when we took it apart. In fact, uh, if you look on the back here, the uh, CPU fan is right underneath this piece of plastic. So it's kind of sucking air in from nothing here, uh, but it does have vents on the top and on the bottom that I'm thinking are helping keeping the airflow consistent enough that it's able to keep itself at a uh, consistent score here. So that was a surprise. Uh, the CPU temperature rose to 64 degrees Celsius or 147.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So it does get warm but the fan is not loud at all. It really won't uh, be all that distracting sitting on your desk, which was also a surprise. But of course, when you look at that fan, it's no wonder why it's so quiet. It's just so tiny. And given this is a KB Lake device, it does have the optimizations for HEVC video. 
we were able to play back our 140 megabits per second 4K 10-bit file with a couple of drop frames, but it should be decent enough for most media playback. Now, one last thing to check out, and that is its support for alternative operating systems. We did load the live version of Ubuntu 17.10 on here. Uh, Wi-Fi works, display works, and guess what? Even audio works on it too. Uh, the speakers on this computer are terrible, by the way, so very muffled, very low. You'll probably want to hook up your own set of speakers to it. And I think running with Ubuntu or another Linux OS is probably the way to go, uh, just because, first of all, these operating systems are free. They seem to run very nice on this KB Lake hardware here. So uh, I think that might be the, probably the best solution for this computer is to uh, get this as a low-cost Linux all-in-one device. It does seem to perform uh, pretty well at that. I'm not crazy about the display. I'm not crazy about the key board and mouse that it comes with. I'm certainly not crazy about uh, how it's working on the Windows side, but here on Linux at least, it does seem to be somewhat functional, although it doesn't have any Bluetooth support apparently here. So uh, there's always these different trade-offs with these cheap computers, and this one seems to have uh, quite a few of them, but I'm sure you could add in a, a Bluetooth dongle or something on the Linux side if you can't get the drivers to work to at least add that functionality to it later. So maybe a good little project computer, but not something I'm going to recommend to general consumers, but if you're you're looking for something like this that performs pretty nicely under $400, uh, probably worth taking a look at. But uh, otherwise, I think there's probably going to be better solutions out there for Windows users and general consumers. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.